Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Worship. Praise and come forward mightily this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the word says no, no man can see the face of God and live. <laughs> But I believe if we could now, we might see a smile on God's face. Yes, yes, <laughs> we might see the pleased Hallelujah. grin of a father Hallelujah. receiving yes. honor, glory, praise, yes, yes. adoration, awe, and respect yes. from his children. Yes, Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory to your name, almighty God. You may be seated before the Lord. Oh, bless your name. Almighty God. Oh. And again, our scriptures. Ephesians chapter 6. This is actually part four in a series that we've been doing, talking about the Christian walk and all the different aspects of the Christian walk. And it won't, <laughs> at its conclusion, will not be anything totally inclusive or exhaustive of the Christian walk, but we'll have an idea of just what it is, what it entails, what is involved, what it means to walk this, this, this Christian life out. We started with the 23rd Psalm and said that through the content and context of the 23rd Psalm, we come across pretty much everything that we're going to experience as believers. We go from the valley of the shadow of death, we go from lying down in green pasture, resting besides still waters, having our souls restored, going through the valley of the shadow of death. Making it through as you have to endure some things. Go and making it through, start to finish, endure it. Going through the valley of the shadow of death. And on the other side, huh, a feast prepared before us in the presence of our enemies. Glorious and mighty before the Lord, our heads are anointed. Cups running over, amen. Mercy, Lord, grace and mercy. Goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives. And that was the 23rd Psalm. Then we talked about in this Christian walk, encountering people. And God doesn't want us to deal with the people in our lives. Because <laughs> when you're dealing with something, you're just trying to handle it until it goes away <laughs> or it, it diminishes in some way. People don't diminish in your lives. <laughs> you, have, you encounter people, you have to treat people a certain way when they come into your life. And we talk and we walk through the love chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Love is important to God. God is love. So much so that God throws a blanket on everybody. Who do we have to love? First, the greatest commandment. Greatest meaning first and most important. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Everything that we are, we have to love the Lord. Okay? We think good, done, we got it. No, God no, said the second. <laughs> Jesus said the second is as important. Love thy neighbor as thyself. So you have to love your neighbor as yourself. So you have to love yourself properly. If you don't love yourself properly, you can't love your neighbor properly. So you have to love your neighbor as yourself. All right, we got God, we got our neighbors. We're good. That's it. Got to be. Got to be. We're good. No. We have to love our enemies. What? What? They don't like us. They're not out for us. They're not on our side. Love your enemies. We walked through and we talked, okay, you know, love our enemies. Okay. Love our enemies. But that wasn't enough. We also have to love one another. Also have to love one another as believers. Jesus said, 
All men will know that you are my disciples. If you love Loving one another as believers is God's calling card. That's how you know. That's how you know. How, you know who brothers and sisters are, family are. You see two people that hang out, they're real tight and close. Oh, they act like they're brothers. That's, that's, the, that's the calling card. Love is the calling card. Love. The way we treat one another. Not the hallmark, oh, I got this deep, warm, fuzzy, big, warm, fuzzy for you. That's not love. That's a calling greeting card that they're going to read and throw away whenever you go away, especially if it has no money in it. Okay? You know, that's 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 the world's love. God's love is. Love is patient and it's kind. <laughs> love seeks not itself. All those things that are mentioned in there, that's love. Love is the act. We said love is an act. Love is not a feeling. Love is an attitude. Love is not an emotion. So Peter Turner got it wrong. <laughs> she said, love, what's love got to do with it? What's love with a secondhand emotion? Love is not an emotion. So, okay, Tina, come on to church if you want to find out what love is. Amen. Amen. And then last week, we talked about the fruit of the Spirit. I think about the fruit of the Spirit, if we're uh, talking about the fruit of the Spirit, and what it means to, to bear the fruit of the Spirit. If you bear the fruit of the Spirit, what bears fruit? Trees and vines, these things bear fruit. These things are not, they're alive, but they're not mobile. They're not agile. When, a, when somebody comes, when the farmer comes, when somebody comes to pick the apple, you ever see the tree, you're like, uh-uh, nope, not today. No, no, no fruit for you today, no fruit. Even if the fruit's not right and somebody comes to pick it, the tree is like, no, they can't do that. They can't do that. We're the trees. When people come up to us, everything that the fruit of the Spirit is, love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, kindness, gentleness, self-control, self-control, all these things, that is the fruit of the Spirit. And the people that come up to us, getting on our last nerve, working our nerves, they're demanding our fruit. They're picking our fruit. We don't decide who gets the fruit, but we decide what kind of fruit they get. You either gonna give them the fruit of the spirit, or you're gonna give them the fruit of the flesh. Fruit of the flesh is everything that the fruit of the spirit is not. If you give them anything that's other than the fruit of the spirit, you've given them fruit of the flesh, and fruit of the flesh is nasty. Bitter, <laughs> rotten, if you will, is just wrong. That's why God tells us. Bear the fruit of the spirit. Display the fruit of the spirit. So, all that being said, this week, the Christian walk, we already know Psalm 23, and, 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 and we've got all these things that we're going to face. we got all these things of how to treat the people that we're going to encounter, because we, we have to walk it out. We have to walk it out. That's what the whole point of the song is. We have to walk it out. We've got to get to the point A and point B. You got to go through. You got to get from point A to point B. Along the way, you're going to encounter people. You have to love those people. Love God first, neighbors as yourself, enemies, and one another. That's everybody. There's nobody left out of that. Dude on the corner with the big dogs who's mean and don't, you know won't clean up after his dog when he walks. Love. Got to love. Got to love. <laughs> got to love. Okay. So then now we have to walk. We have everybody that we're going to encounter: friends, enemies, loved ones. Everybody else, now, God reminds us through his word that we're in a conflict. We're in a struggle. We're in a struggle. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And I'm going to read verses 10 through 12 again. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For the struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces in heavenly places. God already showed us how to treat people. We have to love them, 
We have to display the fruit of the Spirit. When we come to take our fruit, we have to make sure they're receiving the fruit of the Spirit. So that's how we deal with people. And then he reminds us here that our struggle, first he tells us to be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. If you're going to be strong, if you're going to be strong, if you're going to be strong, you can only be strong in the Lord. You can only be strong in the Lord. The army doesn't think so. The army says they're strong, and then there's army strong. That's kind of cool. I, I was digging that when I first heard it. You know what? They're strong, and then there's army strong. You know what? Dang. I'll be army strong. No, I don't want to be army strong. I want to be God strong. Amen. I want to be God strong. Army strong is good in wartime, you know, this and that training. You know, army strong. But God strong is good for me all day long. God, God. God strong gets me through the valley of the shadow of death. God strong anoints my head with oil. God strong prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. God strong allows me to love him first, love my enemies, my neighbors, everybody. God strong. God strong allows me to display the fruit of the spirit. That's what God strong is. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Take God, compare God strong to, to worldly strong. Okay. Worldly strong fails. Worldly strong weakens. You don't stay strong forever. You don't stay strong forever. I need you that funny example right now. <laughs> there was a day when I could bench press, oh, quite a bit of weight. Quite a bit. You throw that on a bar today, you're going to have to help me. I promise you. You're going to have to help me, and it won't sound pretty. <laughs> Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. And the power of his might. If you're going to go forward, go forward in God. Go forward in his strength. Okay? So then it tells us to put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the enemy's enemies, against the devil's schemes, against the wiles of the devil. Put on the full armor of God. And What's the thing about that is saying put on the full armor. The full armor. Going back to the Air Force background, when we had to mop up, when you had to put on the full Kim gear, okay? Every piece had its purpose. Every piece. You had, you had insert gloves, you had outside gloves, you had your, your gear, the, 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 the chemical suit itself, you had the boots, you had the mask, and then you had the hood. And when, when you were fully geared up, when you were fully mopped up, you were protected from whatever chemical, from whatever thing that they could put out there. Bullets, no. Okay, that was not that, but that was for. <laughs> you were chemically protected. But if you were mopping up, if you were putting, putting on all your stuff and you left a piece out, you left yourself vulnerable. Useless. You could put on, you, you could have put on everything you got your suit, you got the boots, you got the gloves, you got the thing, you got, but you forget to put your mask on. They drop the chemicals, you're going to die because you didn't put on the full gear. You can put on the mask by itself. You can put on the mask by itself and don't put on any of the rest of the gear. Well, they just dropping that. It's just gas. Blah, blah, blah. Wrong. Because they have stuff that will get on your skin. Yes. Burn you up. For the rest of your life, you have to deal with that. If you live through the war, through the conflict, through that battle. So what he's telling us here is we have to put on the full armor of God so that we can take a stand against the devil's schemes. The devil's out there. He's, he's against the devil's schemes. schemes. It doesn't say against your neighbor's schemes. It doesn't say against... Your, your teacher's schemes. It doesn't say against your boss's schemes. It doesn't say against the schemes of the person behind the counter or that customer service person on the phone or who that, that person at the gas station was mean mugging you while you're getting gas. You know, they just looking at you mean for no reason. It doesn't say against their schemes. It says against the devil's schemes. We can't stand against the devil's schemes. We need to full put on the full armor of God so that we can stand against the devil's schemes schemes for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers and against the authorities and against the powers of the of this dark world and against the spiritual forces in heavenly places our our, our struggle is not against flesh and blood god already put that filter on 
He already put that filter on. That filter is love and the fruit of the spirit. That's gonna help us deal with those flesh bags walking around out there. Flesh, people. Go around and call nobody no flesh bag. They will not take it the right way. Anyway, that's not who we're dealing with. That's who the enemy's gonna try to come through because that's who we can see. That's who he's gonna try to come through, okay? But he's not, that's not the enemy. Our struggle is not with those people. Our struggle is against the spirits. If you can see it, it's not your enemy. Right. Ooh. Right. Say that. I should write that down. Say that. If you can see it, it's not your enemy. I didn't write that down, but I should have we'll recorded it anyway. If you can see it, it's not your enemy. If you can see it, love it. If you can see it, let it see the fruit of the Spirit. If you can see it. But our struggle is against the rulers, against the Authorities against the powers of this dark world and the spiritual forces. Those are the ones that are out to get us. Those are the ones that want to take us out. Those are the ones. Why do they want to take us out? Because we're believers. If we didn't believe, if we weren't walking with God, if we weren't trying to serve God, they wouldn't care. We're not a threat to them. We're not a threat to them. We're not a threat to them. If you have to walk into this place right now, there wouldn't be a demon that would leave. Not one demon would tremble. Not one demon. But I'll tell you what. But I will tell you what. Because we came through the door, they couldn't stay. They were trembling. They were angry, in fact. They said somewhere, and I'm like, man, shoot. We was at first. He have nothing. Always coming in, kicking people in the face. They got to go. They can't stay. They cannot stay. Because we're walking. Because we're armored up. Now, it doesn't say that they're going to automatically just flee. Some kind of conflict is going to come. If no conflict was going to come, we wouldn't need armor. That's right. We wouldn't need armor. But God armors us up. He's, he's, he's equipped us. That's why he tells us, put on the full armor. Okay? And again, it comes and says again, verse 12, Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand your ground and after you've done everything to stand. Oh, yes. Twice now we've, we've, we've been told to put on the full armor of God. It says put it on so that we can take our stand against the enemy's schemes. It says put it on so that we'll be able to stand our ground. Put your armor on so that you can stand. So that you don't have to flee. You put your armor on so that you can stand. In the day of evil, it doesn't mean that there's a day marked on the calendar where all this evil is going to come on you. The day of evil is just talking about a period of time. And it's not just talking about one. You know, you think you get through this one and you're good to go. No. No. The day of evil is going to be a recurring day. It's a time frame. It's a period where the enemy is going to attack you. Okay. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. That after you've done everything to stand, so God wants us to stand. Verse fourteen: Stand firm. Here we go. Getting into the armor now. Getting into the gear. This is your equipment check right here. This is your equipment check. Just in the same as whenever you get ready to go off to war. They give you a bag, you got to go through and make sure you have every piece because you want to get to the war zone and be without it. If you can't run to the supply counter and be like, wow, I'm missing a filter. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry for you. See what we can do. You got to, okay? I'm telling you, put on the whole armor of God. And here we go, verse 14. Stand firm. First, you got to stand firm. <laughs> First, you have to stand firm. And you stand firm. Read again from the NIV. It says, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. With the belt of truth buckled around your waist. I have on a belt. Buckled around my waist. My, my, my belt is, is holding everything together. Holding things up. I have my belt on. I'd be a good thing up here. I'm going to my pants, hiking them up every two, three seconds. But the belt of truth, and that's what truth is. Truth holds everything together. In the day, when this was written, people didn't wear pants, no suits. They wore the robes. They wore the robes. 
and, but they had belts around the robes. And let me read this from a different version. From the King James, it says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth. Gird up. Having your loins gird up with the truth. When you had those, those robes on, it was, it was a robe. Think of a long like graduation robe type thing, and they had the vestments over it and all of that, but it was a long robe that went down to your feet, and you had your sandals. And it was good for daily movement, standing, sitting, this and that. But if you had to climb a tree, if you had to run or whatever, what you would do is you would reach down, grab your robe, hike it up to a certain point, and you tuck it into your belt. That's how you gird it up. Now, if you do that, now if you needed to run, if you needed to climb a tree, if you needed to do anything out of the ordinary, you were set for that because you were girded up. You could do that because you had on your belt. The belt of truth was holding all of that into place, keeping you prepared for whatever came. So you were you girded up with the truth. When you girded up with the truth, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. The word says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth by itself does not make you free. The truth only no, you only sets you free if you know the truth. You can only be set free by Jesus if you know Jesus, not know of Jesus, not heard of Jesus, not can spell his name right on an application, but if you know Jesus, he can set you free. When the Son sets free is free indeed. The truth will set you free. Freedom is good. Your waist. Lies entangle. You tell one lie, you have to tell another lie to back up that lie, and you have to remember what lie you told first. Which one is too tired for me to be a lie. It's too it's too tiresome. That's why some people aren't good liars. Because it takes too much work. It's too hard to, to maintain a life of lies. You gotta remember who who you told this lie to. What lie back of this lie? That's, that's too tiresome for me. Oh, why? It never worked. I tried lying to my dad when we were younger. But he was too patient. He was too willing to talk through it and get to the truth. Get to the facts, I'll say. Because <laughs> Jesus was not behind what I was doing. <laughs> he was willing to, to talk through it. Because I would tell him I was late because of this. Well, well, why didn't you just leave early? Why didn't you make a better plan. Why didn't you do this and that? And okay, okay. So then the facts would come out. <laughs> the facts would come out. Lies and tangle. Truth. Truth girds you up. Truth makes you ready to run, to fight, to climb a tree, to do whatever else is coming. Truth makes you ready. Be girded up with the belt of truth. And it also says See, with the belt of truth around your waist and the breastplate of righteousness in place. The breastplate of righteousness in place. You see in those old movies, the 300, Gladiator, where they have on the, the breastplate. The breastplate is that piece of metal. You shape like your chest. They cover you, you put it over your head, it covers you front and back. The breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate covered your core, covered all your internal organs. Heart, lungs, kidney, spleen, pancreas, all that other stuff. All the stuff in there. The breastplate protected it. Front side and back side. Protected it. Your heart protected it. Your core protected by the breastplate. This, the God's armor, the armor of God says the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness is your blessed breastplate. Righteousness protects your internal organs, your spiritual internal organs. Righteousness protects your heart. Righteousness protects your heart. Your rights can't protect your heart. You have a right to this and a right to that, but your rights don't protect you. Your rights can't protect you the way righteousness can protect you. We can. We can be right and wrong at the same time. <laughs> you can be right about something, but wrong in your attitude and expressing your rightness. But if you are righteous, we have the example of Joseph when Mary was betrothed unto him and found to be with child. Joseph had rights. Joseph had a right to have her stone. Joseph had it in his mind he was going to put her away quietly. 
Rather than exercise his rights, Joseph chose to be righteous. He put her away quietly. He didn't want to kill. He still had feelings for her. But this just was something that was not right about the situation. It wasn't sitting right with him. Okay, you blind, but now you're pregnant. What's up? You know? And so in his righteousness, God came and God was able to come in and minister unto him and let him know. So he exercised his rights. He exercised his righteousness instead of his rights. Righteousness protected him. Our righteousness. But if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. Righteousness protects your heart because if, if your heart is, is pursuing God's kingdom and his righteousness, then your heart is not pursuing wrong things. So your heart is protected because you're not going after the things that are not good for you. Your heart is protected by righteousness. But the breastplate also covers your back. Righteousness has your back. Righteousness has your back. If you behave in righteousness, there's nothing anybody can say against you. <laughs> they can sneak up behind you and try to ugh, paint right off your righteousness. Talk to the armor. Hey, Amen. Righteousness has your back. Righteousness protects your heart. Righteousness has your back. Walk in righteousness. Righteousness pursuing God's things first. Let's pursue his righteousness. Pursue his the rightness in God. Amen. Righteousness has your back. Verse 15. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. I'm going to read that again from the King James Version. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Your footwear tells people what you, what you came to do. What, you, what you're prepared to do right at that moment. Your footwear will tell it all. When I was in Chicago, signing up for the Air Force, me and Ryan sitting in Union Station, waiting for the train. Rush hour, or rush hour, noon time. And we see all these people rushing by in the windows, and you see them in suits, they're in business suits and stuff like that, and they're just getting it up and down the road, running, running, running. And I'm like, wow, they're running in their suits and shoes? That's gotta hurt their feet. Because all you can see from the window is like from the waist up. Also, all you can see, but then when they come by the door, and then you can see that these people are in suits. There's ladies, they're in like the business skirt coming to the light right here, but they're running down, just getting it down the road. Got a bag here and a suitcase here, and they're just getting it running. And you, when they get to the window, you can see that they're wearing tennis shoes. They're wearing tennis shoes. <laughs> their feet are shod with the preparation of work. <laughs> with the preparation of their circumstance. When they're in their office and they're business-like, they have on their shoes, their work shoes, their flats, their whatever, whatever it is they're wearing, okay? But when it came time to have to transition from this office to that office, or from this office to that train, or whatever, they had, they had to be prepared. Time to change, bang, shoe time, get in the wind. They, their footwear told us how that what, what told me that's what they were prepared to do at that moment. <laughs> Watch. The ladies wear their heels. Are they prepared to go out and play tennis? No. <laughs> Are they prepared to go walking around the mall? No. <laughs> Are they, what are they prepared for? They're prepared to what? Look good. That's what they're prepared to do. And they do. Amen. <laughs> That's what they're prepared to do. Look good at that moment. But when they come, even if they got on the evening gown, this and that, they got sneakers on underneath, you know there's something. <laughs> they're prepared to be what? Comfortable. <laughs> Your footwear tells us what you're prepared to do. Feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Our feet transport us. When we come, when we approach a person, 
Our feet shod with the preparation of peace. With the preparation of the gospel of peace says that because we know the gospel of peace. We're familiar with the gospel of peace. So our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So we're ready to face whatever it is that's coming because we have that peace. Peace is that inner calm. Peace is that, peace doesn't mean absence of conflict. Because it's in conflict that you display peace. Oh, goodness. <laughs> we didn't tell the Democrats and the Republicans that because they think right now that because we're not necessarily at a full blown war, we got conflicts going on here and there, they think that we're at peace. But we're not, we're far from it. Peace is not the absence of conflict, peace is calm through conflict. Peace is Jesus sleeping in a boat through a storm. And they have to wake him up, crying, oh, we're going to die, you up there. That's Jesus displaying peace. That's us displaying peace. That no matter what, where we're going, no matter what situation we're being called into, our feet are shot with preparation of the gospel of peace. So when we go in, we're prepared. We're ready. We've been prepared by the gospel of peace. We know who we are. Our name is Victory, so we're going in victorious. We're walking in victorious. We already know who we are. We already know we're going to win. God wrote it in his plan, so we have peace. We have calm within, so that no matter what comes, we are ready and prepared. Feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace, because our feet tell people, what it is that we're prepared to do at that moment. Okay. Now we're moving on to verse 16. It says, and in addition, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith that you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Your shield of faith. Wow. Your shield of faith. In battle, your shield was one of your most important weapons. Because if anything fell off or if anything malfunctioned, you still got your shield where you can hold people off. You don't even need to be swinging your sword. You don't need to do, do, do anything else. If you fall to your knees, if you fall down and lose your balance, you still got your shield to hold up. And it says you hold up your shield of faith to extinguish all, all of the flaming darts from the enemy. Faith is your shield. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without your shield of faith. He doesn't, it's not called a shield of faith for no reason. Because the enemy is constantly out there. The enemy, the evil one, is constantly out there shooting flaming darts at us. What are these flaming darts? Flaming darts are doubt. Flaming darts are fear. Flaming darts are, are, are questions. Flaming darts are, are arguments against the gospel. Flame the darts are simply words of unbelief, negative attitudes. Those are flaming darts that people are shooting at us all the time. But they, remember, it's the enemy, the evil one, who is shooting those at us. And it's our shield of faith that deflects all of that. Our faith in God. What does Hebrews 11 and 1 say about faith? But faith is what? The evidence of things hoped for and the uh, substance of things not seen. Faith. Faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. That's why God's, that's, that's, that's why we say if you can see it, it's not the enemy. This person comes at you and they're saying all these negative things. I don't know why you're a believer. I don't know why you call yourself a Christian. God's not real. There's no proof that God's real. You can't say that God's real because there's no evidence. You can't prove that God is real. What do you do? You love that person. You show that person the fruit of the spirit. What do you, what, who's the true enemy? What can't be seen? What's motivating this person to say that? That's the unseen. So we're not called to try and figure that out. <laughs> we're called to armor up against that. 
Because if we armor up against that and we have our shield of faith deflecting all those darts. And it says, notice, I love the fact that it says, and you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. All of them. He doesn't have a secret weapon. Y'all saw Iron Man where dude had that one uh, widow maker or whatever it was. He thought he had the end all beat all. I got this. Boom king. You know, that's how the enemy is against us and our shield of faith. He thinks he has. He thinks he has the end all beat all. He thinks he has the weapon that can take us out. He fires it against us. Shield of faith. Tink boom. Nothing. Shield of faith that will protect us. Yeah. Everything that's out there that, that's meant to protect us, there's something bigger that can that can take us out. We can buy the safest car in the world. All the airbags, all the ABS, and all of that kind of stuff. But if you stop in the middle of the intersection and the 18-wheeler is coming down full speed, it's going to take you out. Let's see what that airbag does for you. Let's see what that does. There's always something bigger. But for that shield of faith, there's nothing bigger. There's nothing stronger that the enemy has that can take out the shield of faith. Anybody can hold up the shield of faith because it's one size fits all. It's one size fits all. What, however, it doesn't matter. If I was William the Refrigerator Perry standing up here for as large a human being as he is, he stands behind, if he is standing behind a shield of faith, he is covered. Yeah. Head to toe, your shield of faith that you can extinguish all the enemy's flaming darts. The shield of faith. Faith in God. Faith in his word. Faith in the things that he has spoken into your life through his word and through other people. Faith in all of those things. Faith. That faith will protect you from whatever comes. That faith will protect you against whatever comes, against the arrow of doubt, against the arrow of fear, against the arrow of insecurity, against the arrow of, of I don't know who I am, against the arrow of, well, if God loves you, why are you going through this? All the flaming arrows, nothing can get through, nothing can get past the shield of faith. Hold up your shield of faith. But that's not it. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Now, take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. Take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. The helmet of salvation. You're putting on your helmet of salvation last. Does that mean you do all these other things and you turn around and get saved and that's your salvation? No, you can't do that. You can't do that. That's like trying to put on the, 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 the equipment before you make the team. You can't do it. You can't do Amen? You got to meet all the team's requirements before you get equipment, right? Amen? amen? amen. <laughs> you got to prove your physical. You got to prove legal residence. You got to have insurance and all of that, right? Yeah. <laughs> do you have equipment yet? No. Nope. You met all the requirements, but they haven't handed out the equipment yet. Do you have equipment yet? No, not yet. Are you do now? But you had to go through some things to get that equipment, right? You couldn't play, practice, you couldn't play without equipment. It's just not smart to fight without your equipment. It's not smart to play without your equipment. Amen. So your helmet of salvation, you gotta be saved before you can even be eligible to receive this equipment. Your helmet of salvation, the helmet protects the head. The helmet protects your mind. The helmet protects your brain. Your helmet, the helmet in the physical protects your brain. That's where everything's happening. Your helmet in the physical protects your brain, protects your face. It protects you. It doesn't stop anything from hitting you, but it protects you from the things that will hit you. Because you, you're in a battle, you're in a fight, you're in a game. You're going to get hit. You're going to run into people. You're going to run into people. People are going to run into you. You're going to hit people. People are going to hit you. But your brain is protected in this helmet. By the same token, salvation protects our mind. Salvation protects our thoughts. Salvation protects 
what goes on in the mental. Salvation protects. It protects our it protects attacks against our mind. Because the enemy is cunning. He's devious. He's persistent. He is a lot of things. But he knows that if he can get into our minds, he can get a foothold. And even if he can't, he can't snatch us out of the hands of God. He can't snatch us out. He can convince us to turn away. If he can get to our minds. But salvation, the core of it all, that restored relationship with God, protects our mind, protects our head. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Number one, for God so loved the world. Even before you knew him, even before you got saved, God loved you. Yes. Even before God loved you, the creator of all things, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, loved me. Yes. He loved me. Thank you, Loved me enough to send his son to die on the cross. The fact that God loves me gives me worth. Hallelujah. Gives me worth. No matter who rejects me, no matter who says bad things about me, no matter who ignores me, no matter who looks over me, God's salvation in my life gives me value. That no one can take away, that no one can diminish, that no one can demean. God's salvation, the fact that God loves me, that's my protection up here. That's my protection up here. That no matter what goes through, when I don't have a dime in my pocket, God loves me. Yes. God loves me. Have mm. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> when at work, if I'm at work, nobody speaks to me. God loves me. Yes. <laughs> yes. If everybody gets invited to a party and I don't, yes. God loves me. Yes. Ah. Uh, if I can't wear all the same things, all the nice clothes that everybody else wears, God loves me. Yes. If the popular kids don't like me, God loves me. Hallelujah. Uh, No matter what the situation, no matter who comes and who goes, God loves me. And because I know God loves me, because I know God loves me, I'm protected. The helmet of salvation protects my head. No matter who, no matter what is said, done, perpetuated against, lied on, cheated, talked about, mistreated. We, heard, we all know the song. She says, as long as I got King Jesus. Yes. And the only reason I have King Jesus is because I'm saved. Yes. My yes. salvation protects me. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit. I used to say this is your only offensive weapon. But I don't say that anymore. Because God showed me not necessarily so. Amen. But it is an offensive weapon. Yes, it is. It's an offensive weapon. And we don't have a whole lot. We're not like Rambo with his bullet vest here, and he's got guns taped everywhere, and he's got carrying this one and swinging this one and all of that. No, because Rambo still could have been taken out. Yes. Drop a bomb on Rambo. Rambo's going down. Get the right shot through, Rambo's going down. But we have only, we have a offensive weapon in our arsenal. The sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit. Bear this in mind. That it's a sword. But a sword is only useful, dangerous when it's unsheathed. You keep it at your side, people will look at it it's fancy, it's pretty, it's decorative, and all of that, and ooh, ooh, ooh. But until you pull that sword out and demonstrate some skill with it, 
They're not scared of you. Come on, they see that sword, and they're scared of that sword because of what might happen. But until you demonstrate some skill with that sword, huh? They, they, they ain't gonna come get up in your grill anyway. That's when we get to slicing. That's when we get to slicing and dicing. Yes. Cutting and dividing the sword of the spirit, the word of God. If I take this Bible to work and sit it on my desk, nobody's gonna fear it, nobody's gonna respect it, they're gonna see it there. And if I never even open it, it'll gather dust all day long. In fact, even look even more useless. But just like a real sword, the Bible has got to be in action. How do we activate the sword? How do we pull it out of its sheath and make it deadly and dangerous to the enemy? Not to the people at work. Flesh and blood. Love and the fruit of the spirit. That's how we handle those people, those situations. But the enemy, the one who is firing all those flaming darts, the one who is trying to get at our mind, the one who's trying to get at our heart, the one who's trying to get us from behind, the one who wants to make us not look like we know what we're doing. But the one. But when we pull out that sword of the, the, the sword of the spirit, when we begin to sling it with some skill, he's put at bay. What does that mean to us? That means that we can have the entire Bible memorized. But unless we're willing to apply it to our lives, speak it into our situations, then it's just a sword and it's a sheath. And it is useless. It's decorative. And it's only intimidating to the, the unknown. <laughs> but the big and the bad are going to come after you. Make you have to pull that sword. The big and the bad, the evil, the enemy one. The evil one, the enemy. He's coming after you. He wants to see. He wants to know. You got it. Can you use it? He's just that unintelligent. He's clever and cunning. But he doesn't know that if he would leave a believer alone, if he would leave most believers alone, they might just sit and be content in their salvation. They just might be okay with never sharing the gospel. They would be cool with it. And that's why I continue to pray for the church in China that God would strengthen them. I don't pray that the persecution would necessarily end because it's persecution that, that, that grows the church. It's persecution. It's that persecution that's going to let them know that, 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 that God is indeed on their side. That the great Chinese government, the largest, most populous nation in the world, it, it, their government is coming against these people, but because they stand for God. They can't get to them. They're armored up. They're, the fact that they keep gathering back together, knowing that the government is against them, knowing that people are coming against them, and they hold up that shield of faith. They're wearing that that, that helmet of salvation, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, sword of the spirit. They have that sword of the spirit and they're swinging it and they're yielding, wielding it. But we have to inactivate the sword. We can't just carry it around as decoration. We have to use it. We have to activate it. We have to speak life. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. It's the word that we speak. It's the word that we apply to our lives. It's the word that we stand on. Three, uh, the, at least two times in here, God says stand. Verse 14, stand firm. Verse 12, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. You have to be able to stand. You stand on the word. You stand on the word. That word of God at your side has got to come out when you go into dark situations. When you go into times of persecution, trial, and tribulation, the word of God, you have to speak the word of God. You have to pull it out and you have to sling it in that situation so that you cut, divide, and conquer that situation with the word of God. That is the sword. That is the sword of the spirit. Let's take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. And finally, here it is, the other offensive weapon. <laughs> Come on, man. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Yes. Amen. Yes, yes. 
This is what I was overlooking as an uh, as an offensive weapon. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> this is our other offensive weapon. This is calling for backup. Come on now. Huh. When you got the police and they getting ready to go in, they're like, oh, hold up. We don't know what's on the other side. It might be a lot of them. <sighs> Let me back up over here on 42nd Street. We're, uh, we're in a big building. We need, we need some backup. <laughs> Next thing you know, <laughs> they all rolling in. Cars, cops, dogs, helicopters, everybody else. When you pray, you're calling in the backups. When you pray the word of God in your situation, you're calling in the backups. Because when you pray the word of God, he's dispatching angels. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Don't get me started on the angels. Because, oh my, my, my. Again, <laughs> if you can see it, it's not the enemy. If you can see it, it's not the enemy. Because those angels, we don't see the angels unless they manifest themselves to us. We don't see them. They're in that realm where if we could tear a curtain in this realm of reality that we're in, we would look right into and see the angels getting down on our behalf right now. Getting down for the crown. That's what the world likes to say. But they're getting down for the crown of Christ. They're getting down for the crown of righteousness on our behalf. They're getting down for the crown. When we pray the word of God, when we pray the word of God, when we're interceding on behalf of other saints, we are enacting those angels. We're, we're, we're talking to God and he's dispatching them. Yes. Saying, oh God, we need some backup. Oh Lord, we need some backup. We need some help in this situation. If God's going to send the help, he may send it in the form of another person. But that another person is coming with what? He's coming with an angel on his behalf. And there's other angels that are becoming dispatched to, to, to dispatch and, and war against those evil, um, the authorities. What is it? What did we say? What does the word say? The against the uh, see the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the for spiritual forces in the heavenly realms, principalities. The King James says, all these things we can't we can't combat those. We can't fight them. We can hold them off with our shield of faith. Our gospel, our, our, our armor of God protects us against them. The word of God slices and dices. But as far as actual confrontation with them, we got to pray. Yes. We got to pray. And those angels come in and they get down. They get down on our path. Amen. So prayer. Prayer is our other offensive weapon. Yes. <laughs> See, in sports, you can have too many men on the field and get penalized. <laughs> Football, you know, baseball, that rarely happens in baseball. Too many men on the field. Basketball, it can happen. Football, it can happen. Other sports, soccer, volleyball, whatever. If it's a sport, you can have too many men on the field. In this battle, in this struggle, <laughs> against the demons, we can't have too many people on the field. We can't have too many people on the field. We can't have enough people on the field. If it's just us against whomever, us and them, us, us with God, against anybody, is enough. That's enough. Because God is on our side. Yeah. We pray and those angels get home. They line up more. I tell you what. That's why they say demons tremble. That's why they say demons tremble. The enemy can keep us from praying. He can keep us from praying. Man. One the principle of war is cut your enemy off from their source. Cut your enemy off from their source. You try to fight them. Cut them off from their source. If they cut off from their source, their supplies are going to run out. The animals are going to run out. Everything they have is going to run out eventually. They can be easily overtaken. Prayer keeps us connected to the source. Prayer keeps us connected to God. Prayer keeps us to the reason why we do this thing at all. Prayer keeps us connected. So we have our full gospel armor. We have to have ourselves buried about with truth. That prepares us for whatever is going to come. We're going into battle. We struggle against principalities. We struggle against forces and authorities in high heavenly places. Places that we can't see. But Jesus, the truth, is going to keep us ready for those things. We put on the breastplate of righteousness. And it covers, it, it, it guards our hearts and it's got back. Breastplate of righteousness. Our feet shot with the preparation of peace. We know who we are. Our name is victory. We're going into battle. Our feet are shod with the gospel of preparation and the gospel of peace. We know what it is that we have to do. And we're prepared to go in and do it. We're prepared to go in and do it because we know that God loves us. We have to, 
We have the helm of salvation. It protects our head. It protects our mind. Yeah. Yes. We know. We know who we are. We know whose we are. And no matter who, no matter what, no matter, no matter, God loves us. Yeah. And God loves us. We have our shield of faith. We have our shield of faith. <laughs> With which we can do like all Nothing can escape by. Faith. Nothing gets around faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. If God is pleased, <laughs> nothing can get through. The enemies, the, the, the guards, the flaming guards, because I promise you, he's not shooting one at a time. He's not shooting them one at a time. You've seen the movie, I forget what movie it was. I think it was the 300, where they shoot, and the sky is darkened with arrows that are just coming, and they're coming down, and they, got, they have shields, but those shields are strong enough to stop every single arrow that's coming. So you have people that you poke and you spear through with everything, they have their swords up, shield of faith, you don't have that problem. You come. If you hold them that shield of faith, you come. Shield of faith, you got the sword of the spirit. That word, unsheath the word. Speak the word. Speak the word into your situation. Speak the word into your own life. Speak word and we can't stand against it pray pray the word pray the word call for backup call for backup it's not <laughs> ain't no shame in it in fact God expects it God expects it God commands us to he wants us to call for backup pray the word against these things he has no he has no honor he has no offense. He cannot stand. He cannot stand. It does not say he's not going to attack again because he has persistence. But his failure is guaranteed. His defeat is already spoken. His defeat has already happened. Our name is victory. We fight from a bad, from a standpoint of victory. These are all the weapons of our warfare. These are the weapons. These are the weapons of, that, that, that get issued to us. <laughs> they get issued to us on salvation. The last thing it tells us to put on is the helmet. But it's the first thing that's required in order to get. In order to get issued the equipment. Amen. Amen. If you think when you get dressed, if you wear any type of hat with it, the hat is the last thing to go on. The head cover is the last thing to go on. Ball players, you don't put your helmet on before you put your shoulder pads on. I promise you, you better not. Because <laughs> you'll get laughed off the team. You will not want to come back. The helmet of salvation protects the head. And it's that salvation that allows us to get the equipment in the first place. It's that salvation that causes us, that actually makes us, makes the equipment necessary. Because unless you join God's army, Unless you're a member of the flock, unless you are a child of God, unless you're called by his name, you have no need for it. God's not wasteful. He doesn't give things to those who don't need it. There's not a person in the world out there who's not saved that has one piece of God's armor and one piece of God's armor hanging around, sitting around. They can have they, they might have a Bible. But it's not the sword of the spirit because they don't know how to use it. It's a decoration. It's a decoration. It's like those, those, those swords that people go to Japan or they're in Asia and they buy those swords and it's sitting up on the wall and they're real nice and decorative. And some people have got them and their sword ain't even sharp. That's right. If you try to use it to cut somebody, you're going to hurt them. You're not going to cut anybody, but you're going to hurt them. And that's what they, people can do to the word, with the word. You hurt somebody. And use it. And it's not a problem with trade. It's not a problem with home. That's why, that's why it requires salvation. That's why it requires salvation. We all know we're here, but no, I said, <laughs> we miss you all. So we just want to pray for those who we don't. Those who are not members of the army, those who have not enlisted yet. We just want to offer up a prayer for those. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord. 
we thank you, Lord God. We thank you that you are God. That you are who your word says you are. Over and over again, you've proven yourself. You didn't have to, but you did. Because, just because, you, that's who you are. You are, you are God. You are Abba. You are our Father. You are Jehovah. Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shama. Jehovah, so much to us. Oh Lord, but you also an awesome commander who equips your soldiers with what we need to make it through each day, to make it through each battle. In fact, you've already given us victory. You've named us victory because we have your son, because we have restored relationship with you through your son. God, we don't want to keep it to ourselves. We don't want to stand here, oh God, ready and protected, standing in victory. your desire, that all men would come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. That is our prayer right now, God. That you would send your word out into the land. That you would send your people out into the land to share the good news of Jesus with those who do not know. Lord, we, we pray as it is your desire they come to that saving knowledge that they would say yes yes I do need Jesus yes Father God I need that on because I've been losing this life I've lost some things and almost lost my mind and I need protection I need help so Father even as we pray we pray for those Father that we know Father. And we pray for those who, who we don't know. We just pass by on the, on the road, in the hallway, in the commissary, in the store, in school. We pray for them. But if they don't know Jesus, that's the way to stay with them. That you, that you will bring them to that salvation of God. All that you do, all that you've done, you have to do is very good. We bless your name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let all God's people say amen. 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 And amen. 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 Praise.